I don't even know how long I worked there because I was a volunteer before and after the time that I was paid for being there. <laughs> when I started, I don't think the main building had been constructed even. There was the planetarium first, and then down below they had astronomy, meteorites, mm -hmm. things like that. I don't think there was a single curator there when I started as a guild member. Of course, Dr. Pulley was the museum director. He had a lady working on the shell collection, which was the main thing of the museum at that time. I knew exhibiting, I knew all about fossils. And that was because, um, well, we first got interested as a family, and the kids were little. And we were traveling one summer to back to California, where we had just come from. And the next summer, we'd go to Washington, D.C. to visit my family. And I found that there were geological surveys in each state that you could write to for information on places to collect. So we did a lot of collecting. It's a good way to <laughs> take care of these wiggly little boys, you know. My training had been invertebrate paleontology, and I liked all the life before the dinosaurs. When we first started collecting, our family did, and the kids started exhibiting at the shows, and I had to write the labels for one of my boys who wanted to show fossils that he'd collected. And I found it was such a wonderful, interesting procedure. All the information that had to be on a fossil label, not only the age, but the classification, the group it belonged to, and right down to the genus and species. And that was interesting to me. When I heard there was going to be a hall of paleontology as such, I told Lisa Rabori, well, I hope they'll have some certain things in it. She said, if you have any ideas, put them down on paper. So I took her seriously, and I did that. I wrote a plan. And when my husband looked at it, he said, oh, you've got to be more professional than that. You've got to say how much space it'll take, and how much money. Well, I didn't know any of those things. I went to Connie Boone, who had just succeeded in getting her Hall of Malacology on the balcony there. And I started with her asking about space and cost, and cost of construction and all that, which was really the exhibits department business. And of course, it developed that the hall really had to be downstairs around the dinosaur that we had in an ankylosaurus that came from a New York World's Fair of some far back year. So I, my first time at the Jim, Tucson Jim and Mineral Show, it was a wonderful experience. And the biggest exhibitor I saw there selling fossils was Black Hills Institute of Geological Research. And they were so helpful, and they had the most beautiful specimens. First thing I saw when I entered their exhibit room was a skeleton of a horse, small early horse, and a little saber-toothed cat pouncing on it. I thought, oh man, if we could get that for the museum. Well, it was too expensive, of course, <laughs> but they said they would give me pictures to take back. And they had these gorgeous ammonites with fiery iridescence, just beautiful. And a few other things that I thought people might be able to recognize who didn't know anything about fossils. I think one of my biggest contributions to the museum was knowing these various geologists who'd been helping us in the Gem and Mineral Society 
with the identification service that I had dreamed up because this was something I had always wanted myself. And so these professionals came in to the identification service and eventually we had one at the museum too, an identification day for all this stuff, all the different bugs and whatever.